good evening and for tonight we're going to cook something that is very familiar to the Hokkien family um, my mom used to do this dish because it's two things one's delicious therefore uh, the children will gobble it up and secondly it, if you think about it, it has a lot of extenders um, and everything is in it the meat the vegetables that dish is what we call in Hokkien kiampong kiampong if you kind of uh, translate it actually it means in, in, in Chinese as salted uh, rice or salted cooked rice so in other words it's a casserole um, it's, it's a lovely dish because the thing is it has uh, the flavorings in it which is mainly pork and chicken okay and then you add to that two are the essences that make Chinese cooking Chinese you know such as uh, mushrooms shiitake mushrooms some people would probably put uh, uh, lap chong or the Cantonese sap sausages in order to bring out that extra dimension of, of smoke and, and, and winey flavor. And then you have, of course, your, your usual garlic and your onions, which are toasted. And then not to mention you have your five spices and soy sauce. And then the vegetable portion of that is um, uh, what we call in the Philippines, calabasa. Now it's basically your um, your uh, squash. Now here in the in the states we have lots of kinds of squash. You know, there's yellow squash, there's acorn squash, there's butternut squash. Uh, in the Philippines, there's only one of these uh, squashes. You know that it's basically you can see around. It looks like a pumpkin. So think about it as the untransformed Cinderella um, uh, carriage. But that thing, okay, we. We, it's orange, it has the flavor uh, similar to butternut squash. So imagine the sweetness of that with the spices and with the rice. It's basically a complete dish. So it's a casserole. You only you serve that in the middle of, 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 of the table and everything grabs a, a, a bowl of it and eats it. And you can put ketchup, soy sauce, whatever you want on it and it's really good. Anyway, I'm just dying to have something because it reminds me of home. And I'm going to show you how to, to make it because it's simple. Um, and you can do it for your family. Um, I'm, I guarantee for everybody to have a great, good time. So watch. So on this table, we have the ingredients that are needed to make kempong. Um, of course, uh, we have your rice. This is probably like three cups of rice, raw rice. You have shiitake mushrooms, probably like three to five pieces, uh, rehydrated and then sliced. You have to have fermented uh, salted beans. Um, this is the Philippine version which has uh, really uh, a sort of like a broth of soy sauce uh, along with the beans. But you can buy this also dried. Um, anyway, uh, salted black beans, we call this tau si. And then you have probably like a, a half a pound or three quarters of a pound of uh, butternut squash that has been peeled in the cube. Here you have uh, half an onion that is sliced thinly and some garlic, probably like half a head um, sliced as well. Peeled of course, sliced and chopped. Um, light soy sauce. Chicken broth. You can do without the chicken broth if you, have, if you don't have chicken broth, but then uh, you know it, it adds to the flavor. So if you have some, use it. Um, here we have the Chinese sausages, two Chinese sausages that have been uh, sliced thinly. And then this is pork. Uh, I would probably say like half a pound and then half a pound of chicken right here. Um, so as you can see, these are your meats that would and of course the broth would flavor your, your rice. So it's the meat portion, the vegetable portion, and your carbohydrate. And then not to mention, of course, salt and pepper to taste. Okay, these are the ingredients. Let's head to the kitchen. Hi, so welcome to the stove. And um, actually I quite kind of like started the um, dish by getting all the chicken fat and making uh, cracklings out of it. So it gives you the fat that has flavor, of course, rather than starting from vegetable oil. Anyway, with that um, already hot, and uh, as you can see, that's the oil right there, put your um, garlic and your onions to saute. Saute nicely. And then, 
you have to uh, make this um, sort of you know, roast and brown. So I'll be back uh, later during the cleaning time. About three minutes later, you add your uh, lak chong or your Cantonese sausages. And what it does is that with all the fat from the Cantonese sausages, that will sort of disintegrate and integrate with the uh, sauté. So that adds more flavor. So, sauté that and kind of like leave it alone for about a minute or so. After a minute, add a tablespoon or a tablespoon and a half of your tausi or your fermented uh, uh, black soybeans without the uh, sauce because this is very very salty um, anyway add that and saute it up to this mixture add your meat and saute further With the meat equally sautéed in the mixture, now you add your rice, somewhat like similar to cooking risotto. So pour the rice in and then mix very well. And you want to equally coat the meats with the rice and your um you know your initial mixture of the garlic the onions and all that goodness once that is done you add your chicken broth now how much chicken broth you need to cook. Um, it's like this. Uh, there's a rule in cooking rice. It's usually um, the level of the water should be sort of like uh, on the first, uh, you know, first line of your of your middle finger. So if this is the level of the rice. Let me show you. If this is the mi middle of your. If this is the level of your rice, now you put your finger that way, and then the water should be at that first level. You know, the first. Um, um, uh, line of your middle finger now because you have stuff in here such as your your uh, your Chinese sausages your your, your um, meats and all that you need to put more Now, here, um, since we have a lot of stuff, as I've said, the water level is probably up to my, my the second the second um, um, line of my middle finger, or if using uh, my pointing finger, it's actually the second um, line as well. Anyway, at this point, you add your vegetables and your soy sauce plus the five spices and mix well. How much soy sauce it's up to you uh, probably like half a cup uh, or just probably like one-fourth okay actually I would say one-fourth Now you may want to taste just so that you can make sure that it's to your liking as far as the saltiness is concerned. Uh, actually I just think it's, you know, it's just right. So we won't add any more salt. 
Now to this, okay, occasionally you have to open your uh, casserole so that at least you can assure that the rice is cooking. And uh, what you may need to do uh, once it's, it's, it begins to cook is that you need to get the rice from underneath and put it on top so that at least there will be even cooking. Um, there is a sort of like a superstition about this. My mom used to cover the pot, you know, when she sets it at low or simmer, and then she puts salt on top of the cover. She said that it helps uh, to for the rice to, to cook in the final, uh, you know, steaming process. I don't know whether that's true or not. Scientifically, I don't think it's true. I don't see how that uh, salt on top of, of the cover of your of your pot would help cook the rice, but she does it. Now, I'm not going to do it here. In any case, this setting of my stove is kind of too high. So I'm going to move this pot over, over to the other side because it has a lower heat setting. And then, um, as I've said, once in a while, open your pot, stir the con contents from bottom to top. Um, you may, you just have to do that gently. And, and so that you can also have all the ingredients mixed together evenly. But uh, do that. But I'll use this uh, setting as I've said and then we'll come back to this later and I'll, and I'll show you how it looks like. Halfway through the uh, steaming and simmering process as we open the pot, as you can see, the rice is, is really beginning to flop and all that. Now the problem with this dish is that it will become so thick that underneath it may probably burn. So you want to stir occasionally but you have to do this very carefully. As I've said, go from below and then go above kind of like that, that go below and above below and above below and above taking care not to mush your vegetables but if you do this you will end up with less um uh what we call in the philippines tuto or uh, burnt rice that is actually found on the bottom of the pan so um, just you know try to and then once you've done that you will notice that all the liquids will go down at the bottom of the pan and you need to do that it's going to dry up it's going to dry up all the, the the liquids so anyway you cover that and then you leave it to simmer further after all that simmering again open the cover and you can see this is your product more or less this is done as you can see the the the, the, uh, um, the, the rice is already cooked and uh, there are no more liquids bubbling on the side so this is done you turn it off and you just let it rest covered probably leave it for about 15 30 minutes and then you can open this and then present it to your family or your guests and it is just the taste of home. I will show you how it looks like um, when you serve it already on a bowl with chopsticks or probably even just a, a spoon and fork. But in any case, it is just heaven. So, are we ready to eat? And the answer to that is yes! Anyway, I opened this thing. As you can see, it's already well cooked and it's steaming and it's just perfect. And now, actually the way to serve this thing if you want to be co in kosher about it you know uh, i borrowed the word from jewish from, from the jewish religion but but then the thing is um they say that you have to have something green on top something like green, let's say green scallions or what i don't have any green scallions but probably i can use this these parsley flakes for now anyway it will achieve the same effect and as you can see isn't that cute huh i mean look at that the green um, parsley flakes on top of the rice it's basically the perfect casserole dish now this is good now as they say you know or we're going to eat or as they say in Mandarin so anyway it's really good yummy look at that huh mm, let me try it mmm mmm mm. Hot as it may be, that's perfect. Sriracha sauce is actually something that uh, you may want to, to put in. Or uh, in the olden days, we used to, 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 to put some ketchup, but then 
ketchup smetchup you just want probably something um um oh my oh my sriracha sauce is mm, there you go oh yes ah pardon that interruption um this is just perfect anyway there you go well so, i advise you to try this recipe it's really simple but you will just imagine what kind of happiness your family would uh will, will get and all the smiles that you will get for just very little effort but you know so then Ah, see you next time with the big fat white guy. <laughs>